Tom and the director of the Houston Comedy Film Festival. And today we have a special guest, Yusuf Matawi. How are you doing, Yusuf? I'm great. How are you? Congrats, your film nominated for the Best Comedy Film Award at our Summer 2022 competition, which will be screening in August. Congrats, man. Thank you very I really appreciate it. I do. The judges really, really impressed with your film, um, just your characters, your the way you developed it. I don't want to give away the story. I'm going to turn it over to you to give us a synopsis. What are people going to see in August? It's funny. I still struggle to uh, to explain what this thing is, but um, to put it simply, it's it's two strangers walking into a mysteriously vacant convenience store. One of them trying to convince the other to steal while they have the opportunity, while nobody's there, and the other person being very hesitant to that. And uh, you know, there's the, the person who wants to steal has has his own little um, ideas of, of what he's going to gain out of this. That's kind of not shown to the other person. So it's a little cute little thing that's um, has a fun little twist at the end, and it's just kind of a fun fun ride. All right. The perfect crime is a fun ride. And, and I think it's the way that um, just the, the two actors just go back and forth with each other is it looks like they work together or at least they prepare for this really well. And can you tell us how casting went and, and how you were able to get that or at least facilitate that dynamic they have? Uh, well, casting was, uh, was a very easy process for me. Um, I knew one of the guys, uh, Steve, the, the one that wanted to steal, um he he lived in the same building as me we lived in like a cooperative kind of dorm situation so we could uh, afford to live while we're going through the same school but in different things he was in the acting program i was in the film production program but we didn't meet through the school we just met through coincidence having to be in the same building and he's an amazing actor um and and michael i'm not even sure i don't remember how i met him the first time i feel like it was uh oh was, was it through facebook or was it through recommendation i can't remember and i'm still working with michael i love him but i'm, I'm pretty bad with with remembering the first time i've met somebody but it was a very easy process right when i saw him and i talked to them both of them i was like these guys are right for the role i kind of started writing this actually with steve in mind and then i met michael soon after and then i shifted that whole character to be the complete opposite of michael and uh the pre-production was exhaustive i wanted to do multiple meetings a week for you know, four or five weeks while we're in pre-production. So they knew everything inside and out. It shows, man, the prep is there. Um, it shows and, you know, kudos to you as a, as a director and really as a producer trying to, trying to really take the project from you know, the pre-production stages all the way to the end and have a specific vision. Is there any particular inspiration that you had to make this particular story? I did have a very specific thing that, that made this come to mind. I had a short amount of time to write this thing. I had some deadlines I had to reach and, and I was like, if I want to get this off the ground, I had a very tight schedule. So um, it came from this uh, experience of me and a friend of mine. We, w when we were back in Winnipeg, when I lived there, uh, we were looking for record stores. We just had a day to do nothing. So we we're driving around the city looking for record stores that we've never seen before. And we ended up in one in, in the North end of town which is a little seedier, but we, we kind of go in there and there's just nobody working there. Um, we didn't steal anything, don't worry. But uh, a, a big thing where I draw my inspiration from for just comedy scripts specifically, because I write other things as well, but is I take an experience that I've had and then I take it to its most absurd or most extreme. Like what would happen if, you know, we didn't know each other and he was, uh, he was the one that wanted to steal or I was the one that wanted to steal and the other person was hesitant and then just kind of let it flourish from there and see where it takes me. Oh, wow. Okay, cool. Well, um, where is it going to take you? What's next for you? What's next for me? I, I've already directed two more things. They're both in post-production and I'm, I'm the editor on both of them, but uh, we're scoring one of them. It's uh it's another comedy, kind of absurd comedy, but it goes into a lot of directions. It goes from comedy to uh thriller almost to um like dark borderline experimental horror it just kind of mm -hmm. bounces all around and uh, it's called a bit much because it's a bit much uh so i just i just thought that would be a good name for it. my roommate actually came up with the name another filmmaker noel and uh and a horror that michael the guy who played remy the main character of a bit much he had written it with a friend of his and they wanted me to direct it thankfully they they had that faith in me and 
it's looking looking really really good right now wow well we can't wait to check it out we have a whole nother event that caters to that kind of um filmmaking we have the austin after dark film festival so yeah i'll definitely be um, looking at that one that's for sure it, interesting check us out we're about to have a huge a weekend in july and we'll have another event in november but you know you talk about wearing many hats I mean, you talk about directing you talk about being in school you talk about editing you talked about pre-production you got to wear a lot of hats in this business but i got to ask you where did all this start where did where, where, at what point maybe it was just attending school but but at what point did you just say you know what i'm not just going to have a bunch of good ideas i'm actually going to do something yeah there was uh it was one of those i was in university in Manitoba for business and law. And at a certain point, I just thought if, if I, if I'm stuck behind a desk and not editing, if I'm stuck behind a desk, not editing for, I don't know, 20, 30 years, I have no idea how I'm going to feel about my own life. That's not the path that, that I would be comfortable with taking. And uh, I, I found out that I had been using film as, as an escape, but also ways to, uh, to cope with other things in my life. Um, mm -hmm. Happy, uh, helping manage my my anxiety or anything, any negative emotion that came along with things. And uh, I was like, I'm just going to, I'm going to move to Toronto. I'm going to go to film school. I'm just going to do this uh, to the, to the worry of my, my father specifically. He was, he was not on board initially, but I think he's, he's turning around. He can see that uh, I can make a good life out of this and not just financially, but it's chicken soup for the soul, you know? Sure. Yeah. Thanks for being transparent about that. No, um, it's fun. Uh, I, I love, I love knowing that I made that jump because if I didn't, um, I, I would still be stressed out. Like, what am I going to do with my life? I was on a path, but I knew that's not what I wanted to do. So maybe I'd get sure. this degree and then I'd just be lost again. So, uh, I felt like that was the only decision I could have made, or it's the only decision I should have made. And I made it and, uh, mm. I haven't, uh, regretted a second of it. Good for you, man. You know, my dad, he was old school. I'm a lot older than you, you know, growing up as a kid back in the 80s. I'm 48 years old. But my father used to tell me he was, he would see what I would spend my time doing, like mm -hmm. uh, movies and video games. He'd say, he'd tell me, boy, those video games and those comic books, they never going to be nothing. You get a job. <laughs> you know? And it's like, uh, if only you could see me now, dad, you know. Yeah. It's, it's, on now, but. it's amazing. It's uh I think shocking to a lot of people because you know there's that assumption that the arts make no money like you can't have a good living on it you can be a starving artist forever and that's what i'm relishing in right now i'm kind of loving that whole experience of of uh of quite literally starving sometimes but don't tell sure. them that um but let's say you know you join a union or or you just get in with certain groups of people and, and works there and you can find work and you can live a comfortable life and also do what you love to do. It's it's kind of a beautiful combination of, you know, expectation of society as well as expectation for yourself. You know, creating content is is one of those things. It's a great way to um, reach a lot of people. And I know there's a lot of content out there these days, but you can make money doing this. You know, mm -hmm. I, I tell people, hey, I was a sound mixer at the age of 25. I was making over $100,000 a year, you know, on set. But I was also working like a, a crazy person mm -hmm. with no responsibilities, you know, no, nothing to worry about. I was just every time someone called me, I had my my mixer and my mics and, you know, everything was in the Pelican cases and I yeah. would drive anywhere and and I'd just pretend I was local, man. I, you know, I was living in Houston. I'd show up in Dallas, you know, I'd get a Motel 6 or whatever. I didn't say anything. I just took the job. Mm -hmm. And um, sometimes you have to be a go getter in this thing to really make the money because there is money in entertainment. And I think I'd have to do the research. I think that's like the number one or number two export of the United Kingdom. Um, and I think number one might be education, you know, like, mm -hmm. you know, university and stuff like that. Like they, that's huge that, you know, it's such a big industry. You can make it, there are ways to make money. And um, I encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. You're making high quality content. Uh, you're making things that stand above your peers um, in so many ways. And I think, attention to detail, um, being your own worst critic and really being hard on yourself is how you're producing good products. And, you know, keep those projects in post as long as you can to make sure that they're achieving as close to the vision as you can get. And I have no doubt you'll be successful in what you're doing. I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, I'm bad at taking compliments, but I'll take this one. Oh, good. Oh, good. Well, I appreciate you, my friend. Is there anything else that uh, you want to go over before we get out of here? Um, 
Can I do just a little shout out? Just thank, thanking Absolutely. everybody. Okay, beautiful. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you and everybody at the uh, at the festival here, the judges, whoever's gonna watch it, whoever's watching this. Thank you for watching this. Um, I don't expect uh, to be interviewed by people, but it's it feels it feels kind of good. Maybe I should start chasing this, but <laughs> chasing this high. But um, yeah, I really want to thank my team specifically. Uh, we had. Um, Noel Pendawa, he was behind the camera. He was DP, Shuki, Young, AD, Abigail, Makeup. Um, Amir was gaffing, Kirk gripping. Um, Thomas helped with the props. We had these little these little things that we made. They didn't they didn't make very much uh, much of an an entrance into the into the thing. But you see them there a couple of times. It's like pictures of me and and his girlfriend, who's also in film, Michelle, and and them for the uh, what are they called the the vinyl like the casing for the vinyls mm -hmm. um annie the uh the sound recordist and keenan my production manager and uh yeah everybody else that, that helped out that's that's mostly everybody jaylen who did the title she did an amazing job and the poster which i love deeply but that's about it that's that's everyone enough except me i didn't thank myself but that's fine i don't need <laughs> Well, good stuff, man. It takes a team, and uh, it, it sounds like you have a great core of individuals that that you can call upon when you want to make mm. something that you believe in. So, definitely. You know, sorry, sorry, I almost cut you off. We're always collaborating, but also, yeah, thank you, Steve and Michael, for acting in this thing. How, how did I forget about them? I don't know, but I'm still working with them. I'm working with everybody still that I'm involved with. So, I love working with them, and I can't can't stop. Good stuff. Keep doing what you're doing, and have a great weekend, my man. Yeah, you too. Have a good one. Thanks.